All right, let's let's move through the process now. Let's say you've interviewed candidates. Let's say you've got two, I mean, almost identical people that you have interviewed. What what do you do? How do you make those decisions when they are so closely aligned? That's a challenging position to be in because at some point you just have to make a leap, right? And you have to go with one of them. So I'm going to look, I'm going to look at all the components. And so I'm not just looking at, oh, all, you know, they have equally matched technical skills or they, I'm going to take in their, the, all of the, the big picture. So all the different categories there and, and kind of weigh those out and try to be as objective as possible. I'm going to solicit feedback from other people. When I do an interview, I have them meet. So I will ask for their perspective and I take it all in, all in. And usually there's something that will start to bubble to the top, even if they're close. Like when you take in all the information and not keep such a narrow focus. Um, and so, so that's going to be their years of experience, what they're looking for next in their career. Um, compensation might play a part in that. It might not. But so all of those factors. And like I said, usually when you take in enough information, it's almost like doing a survey. If you do a survey with three people versus 2,000 people, you're, you know, the more information that you take in, the more I feel like the re more reliable the data is. So I just look at all of it. Yeah, I think that's so important for people to understand because I know I have clients and I just know of people that are making it to that last round and they're like, nothing was wrong. Like, I don't understand. It was a good interview. Everything seemed to work out and I still didn't get it. And I know that that's a lot of disappointment for people, right? Because they've gone through this process and gotten to know everybody. But I think this perspective is really important. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. that's why interviews get tacked on that weren't originally part of the process, right? So if that happens, it's likely that they're trying to decide between two or three people. But also, no, it's not necessarily that you've done anything wrong. Right. You oh, know? absolutely. Absolutely. And I know it can get discouraging. Um, I have a good friend who's going through it right now. And it, and she's talented, intelligent, and capable. And so it is challenging and it can become discouraging. But um, I, you know, I know this may not be a lot of comfort, but what I would say to those individuals is one, if you don't ask for feedback, start doing that. Um, reach out to either the hiring manager, if you have an ability, a way to do that, or to the talent acquisition team and ask for feedback. And so let them know, you know, I was really hoping that this was going to work and um, I understand it didn't, but can you help me learn from this experience? Can you help me grow from this? So I'm more, you know, even more ready the next time this goes through. Um, and leave it the door open because you just never know, mm -hmm. right? Leave the door open. It gives you that opportunity to circle back, show that you appreciate feedback, that you're open to feedback, and that you want to leave the door open for uh, future opportunities. Yeah, I love that because I think sometimes people get really upset about it and then they just don't want anything to do with the company right. anymore. No. But I think having that follow-up communication to say, thank you so much. If yeah. something comes up that you think I might be good for, please let me know. And I will continue to look at the, the website for new opportunities. I think that's such a good way to leave it. Even if you're upset, you can be upset. Absolutely. Right. But right. make sure that you still have that professionalism when you're working with the hiring manager or the recruiter in that communication. Oh, absolutely. Talk about differentiating yourself right there. That is one way because it shows that you are mature enough to, you know, take rejection and that you're mature enough and open enough to ask for feedback. It really shows mm -hmm. you. I think it really makes you stand out uh, by taking those steps. So especially at a, at a larger organization. I think that's so important because there are so many more opportunities. And so even if mm -hmm. you're not the hiring manager, you might know the person or be able to just say, hey, pull this person's resume because I already interviewed them and they're really great. That's right. huge. That's what you that's need, right. you know, so that's you don't want right. to burn that bridge at all. 